So I think you already worked out that we have uh, 0.2 moles per liter of the acid, and you've got 0.05 liters of the acid, and then you had a little trouble working this out. But the best way to do that is just work it out on paper. Let's go back to elementary school and we do a normal multiplication like this. I guess I set this up wrong. So like this, well, 2 times 5 is 10. So 1, 0. And then how many decimal points are there? Well, you count how many decimal points there are up here. 1, 2, 3. So there should be three decimal points in our answer. I think this is what you eventually ended up with, but it took you a little bit to get to that. I, I think you eventually started using fractions. But actually, if we remember how to multiply decimals, this is probably the fastest approach. We can just multiply these two decimals. Um, by the way, that wasn't facetious. Um, I can't remember the last time I was working with a student that remembered how to multiply decimals, but that's part of your job in preparing for the test. And, decimals. Yeah, maybe we should review that too. <laughs> part of your job in preparing for the test is going back to grade school and remembering how to multiply and divide decimals. All right, so um, anyway, this is the way to do it. And with practice, this is the fastest approach. And we don't want to do it in our head, we want to do it on paper. So, and um, I'm just going to write down up here then, so we have 0 0.01 moles originally of nitric acid. All right, now let's figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've got. Yeah, we don't have to do that much work. This should, it should just be half of it. That's right, because we have half the concentration and the same volume. So how many, how many moles of, uh, are we going to have here? 0.05. Yeah, so 50 milliliters would give 0.005. It's good that you know that this is half of this. That's not so obvious either. So this is 0.005 moles of sodium hydroxide. All right, now you're asking, what should we be putting to react with each other? Well, we shouldn't just show the acid reacting with water anymore. We should show the acid reacting with the base. And then what are our products going to be? Um, water and NA and 3 That's right. Now, what should be our initial starting point here for the nitric acid? 0 0.01. 0.01. And the initial starting point here was 0.005. And we can say, uh, and then, maybe this is a little tricky, what's our change going to be? 0.05. That's right. Now, this is a reaction that goes to completion again. How do we know that it goes to completion? Because it involves strong acids and bases. Well, when a reaction goes to completion, you need to find the limiting reagent. Well, this is the limiting reagent. This is what we're going to run out of first. So we're going to use up 0.005 of both of these. We're not going to use up 0.01 of the nitric acid. So then how much nitric acid do we end up with? 0.005. And we don't even really care about the concentrations of this stuff on the right. We don't care about the concentration of water, and these are just spectator ions. These are neither acidic nor basic, so we don't care about their concentration. So I won't bother writing anything down. Lots of acid-base problems have a bunch of spectator ions we don't care about. So we don't care about these. So we've ended up with this. If this was if it were weak, weak acids and bases, I would need to have like a, a KEQ to find out how much. That's right. Except that for acid bases, the KEQ is called the KA. The Ka is what you would need. That's right. Because with a weak acid and base, the reaction doesn't go to completion. So what do you do when a reaction is going to completion? You find the limiting reagent. What do you do when a reaction is going to equilibrium? You use the equilibrium constant. Well, that's the, the difference between those. So I do get a chance to review that. OK? Well, what would we do now uh, as we're trying to figure out what the pH is? Well, in, in a sense, this is kind of obvious. But the next thing to do is to make a whole new start change end table. So let's see here. Now we have nitric acid plus water. How much nitric acid are we starting with now? Well, now we have the 0.005. 
and how much nitric acid is, are we going to use up in this reaction? All of it. So how much hydronium are we going to be producing? So we end up with a hydronium concentration of 0 0.005. Now, on the test, maybe you'll just do this step in your head, because it seems so obvious. But it's good to see that we're really doing two separate start change end tables. First of all, we have to react all the, the, the two acids and bases with each other. And then we have to react whatever's left with the water. Um, that gives us our 0.005. All right. Um, and what would we do now to find the pH? Now, does this represent moles or concentration? Because we didn't go to moles here. So now is when we have to change this into a concentration first. So let's first change that into a concentration. So, okay. so I'm looking at how much, is it 100 milliliters or how much I have in total? That's right. Since we've added 50 milliliters to 50 milliliters, we have 100 milliliters total. Take your time. It's an All right. It's it's like five out of this was six was five out of eight. Let's go through that together a little bit. So five. I don't know, I think you might be on the wrong track there, a little bit. So we have a concentration of point oh oh five. Sorry, we have point oh oh five. Oh, moles. Plus I want liters. And that's right. That's the big problem. So how many liters are we dealing with here? Um, that was 100 milliliters, so 0.1. That's right. You've got to change it. Because what does capital M stand for? Capital M stands for moles per liter, not milliliters. So 0.05. That's right, 0.05. Even that's not obvious to me. I would do that on paper. So um, well, I guess the easiest thing to do here is multiply the top and the bottom by 10. If you multiply both the top and the bottom by 10, you get 0 0.05 over 1. You have to get rid of the decimal on the bottom. So we multiply the top and the bottom by 10. So we end up with 0 0.05 molar. So now we know that we ended up with 0 0.05 molar. So I the pH one. So pH of Five times ten to the negative two. Right. So I know that this is in between two and one. Good. Good. So we have 5 times 10 to the negative 2. And what's this the concentration of? This is the concentration of hydronium, right? Remember that we can kind of use hydronium and H plus as interchangeable. So the number we're dealing with here is 5 times 10 to the negative 2. Well, that's bigger than 10 to the negative 2 and smaller than 10 to the negative 1. And if we take the P's, well, this is the biggest number, so it has the smallest P. What's the P of 10 to the negative 1? 1. This expression in the middle represents the pH. And this expression, the P of 10 to the negative 2, is the negative exponent, which is 2. And this is the answer that you came up with. Remember that earlier, we were had, um, when we started, the pH was between 0 and 1. So just like we would have expected, the pH now has increased to be between 1 and 2. And usually, there would only be one choice between 1 and 2. So now we could pick that out. Again, on the real test, you wouldn't necessarily write down every single step here on the board, but you should be thinking in these terms. These start change in tables are so simple, especially this one, that you can maybe do it in your head. But it's important to realize that there, we really have two separate start change in tables. So but let's review um, what we did here. Um, in this case, we did have to start by switching into moles. Start change end tables can work for either molarity or moles, and you have to use your judgment as to which one to work with. But because we're combining two separate solutions, we need to put everything into moles here. Um, what do you do when you have an acid and a base together? Well, when you have an acid and a base together, you start by showing them reacting with each other, not reacting with water. So the first thing was to show the acid reacting with the base, and since they're strong, it goes to completion. 
But what do you do if you still have some acid or base left over after that? Well, then you still need to think about that reacting with water. Uh, this is so simple, maybe you can do that in your head. Uh, but this was in moles, so then we had to turn this into molarity to find the pH, and we used scientific notation to do that. And now where are we uh, in our picture? So now we'd be at a higher pH than before.